Microsoft is falling behind in the arm race, and it's all because of a deal they made back in 2016. Now, 2016 was before Apple blew everyone's minds with their third processor architecture switch on the Mac, from Intel's x86 to their own M1 chips. But starting in 2016, Microsoft and Qualcomm had an exclusivity deal, and lucky for Microsoft and the future of Windows on ARM, that deal is set to expire sometime soon, supposedly. Why do I mention all this? Well, a few weeks ago, Absolmic, or however you pronounce that name, sent me this. It's called the Dot One Mini PC, and it's a tiny Windows on ARM box that runs Windows 11 Pro on a Qualcomm Snapdragon ARM SoC. It's kind of like a Raspberry Pi, but for Windows. And it's about twice as fast as the Pi, at least in synthetic benchmarks. It could be so much better, but it's not. I mean, it's kind of okay if you just need a little Windows PC to strap to a display, and it even comes with this visa mount bracket for that. Or maybe you just want a tiny low energy Windows desktop. But it could be so much more, and I'll get to why. But first, let me run through the specs. It's bare bones and tiny. On the front, it just has audio in and out and three USB ports, and only that last one is USB 3. On the back, there's a 12 volt power plug, two HDMI ports, but only the second one supports HDMI audio, a 10 hundred megabit ethernet jack, I'll get to that in a minute, and a Wi-Fi antenna. You can buy a model with 4G built in, but the one I have can't be upgraded. I actually took this thing apart and the 4G expansion is part of the Qualcomm system on module board. It doesn't use a 4G LTE card that you can just drop in. The one I have here is the mid-range option. It has six gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of flash storage. It came with a Wi-Fi antenna, HDMI cable, Visa mount, and power plug, and all put together, it's a solid little package. This one cost about 250 bucks and the base model is 30 bucks less. That's a similar price to other mini PCs running Intel chips like the J4125, though this one is a little more energy efficient, at least on paper. And of course, it includes Windows 11 Pro on ARM. And that's where some of the experience falls apart. After installing Firefox, the first thing I did was some Ethernet benchmarks. I downloaded iPerf3 and opened PowerShell and <laughs> sat there waiting for the command prompt. I mean, it's PowerShell. It took nine seconds just to open and get to a prompt. I can understand if a GUI heavy app takes a few seconds longer on a tiny mobile CPU, but a terminal app? Microsoft needs to do better here. And common tasks like web browsing and opening apps are even sluggish. Compared to cheaper Intel Atom PCs, it's not too bad, but those are usually half the price. The general experience with Windows on ARM, at least on devices like the Dot One, is frustrating. I wanted to test out Minecraft since it has a Java version that's supposedly compatible. I was reading I might need to patch something to get it working, but heck, I couldn't even download it from the Microsoft Store. I let it sit for an hour or so, but it got stuck at some point and I can't even cancel the download. Then I tried downloading Rocket League from the Epic Game Store and that store app wouldn't even finish loading all the way. So then I tried downloading an older game, Burnout Paradise on Steam, and it was just really slow. Burnout wouldn't even load because the library it needed couldn't run on ARM processors, and about 20 minutes after finding that out, out of the blue Rocket League just popped up on the desktop. I double clicked it, and then for about two minutes, it looked like it was locked up. But finally, something opened up full screen, and then the screen was black again. After a couple more minutes, the main screen loaded, and I could actually get into a little tutorial, but it was completely unusable. And it kept soft crashing to the point where I couldn't even get to the task manager to kill it, so I had to log out. And then somehow a day after I tried installing it on Windows Store, Minecraft suddenly appeared and heck, it actually ran halfway decent. I mean, you're not going to be streaming on Twitch here, but it was playable. But it was still slow to launch and every once in a while it felt like it was locked up. Windows on ARM is a second class experience right now. Most apps aren't cross compiled for ARM, so even if you can get them to run, unlike with Apple's Rosetta translation layer, it's going to run slow and glitchy. It isn't all bad though, a few apps like Firefox and Geekbench already have ARM native versions for Windows, but it's a chicken and egg problem. Microsoft won't fully commit to ARM, so most software developers won't even put ARM on the roadmap. With Apple, they dictated ARM support was the future for their platform, and they included an extremely good Intel emulation layer. This made it so that developers were motivated to switch, but it also helped users who are upgrading since they could run their old apps without any hiccups. Mostly, I'm still working on virtualization setup on Apple Silicon. But let's get back to the specifics for the Dot One. I ran through a bunch of benchmarks and some were kind of surprising. 
First of all, the Ethernet connection was extremely slow. I mean, by any modern standard. It could put through 94 megabits, which is fine for a 100 megabit connection, but like, it's 2022. This thing should be at least a gigabit. The reason it's stuck at 100 megabits is because it's using a cheap USB 2.0 to Ethernet bridge. But even there, they could have used a gigabit bridge and just accepted 200 or 300 megabits like the Raspberry Pi 3 did. But they didn't. I mean, 1000 is okay for some use cases, but it was painful for me, even for things like game downloads. Wi-Fi is actually better. It's Wi-Fi 5 or AC, and using it with my router about a meter away, I was able to get about 250 megabits. That's less than half what I get on my iPhone or Mac on the same network, but it is more than double the weak Ethernet ports throughput. The annoying thing there was, no matter what, I couldn't get Wi-Fi to auto-connect. Every time I rebooted or cold booted, I have to go into the network settings and manually click connect, even though the connect automatically checkbox was checked. No clue why, but that meant my dot one would default back to ethernet, which as I mentioned, is slow. Moving on to the built-in storage, the dot one comes with a UFS 2.1 chip from Samsung with 128 gigs of flash storage. It's pretty decent, getting half a gigabyte per second read speeds, over 200 megabytes per second write, and a little more than 20 megabytes per second for small block sizes. It's nothing like an NVMe drive or even a high-end SATA SSD, but it's definitely better than the eMMC storage you'll find in some of the cheaper mini PCs out there. Power consumption is where the Dot One really shines. If you want to run Windows 11 with the lowest possible power consumption, this device is close to perfect. It idles around 4 watts, and during the heaviest load, it only gets up to around 7 watts. That's about on par with the Pi 4's power consumption, but this thing can be up to twice as fast with the same power use. Not that it makes a huge difference under Windows, but it just shows how much better Windows could be on a computer like the Dot One. Since it has a native ARM build, I also ran Geekbench a lot. I wanted to see if the CPU would throttle in the fanless case. All that's joining the SOC to the case is this thick thermal pad. And I found that it does start thermal throttling after moderate use. The SOC says it has 2.4 GHz cores, but judging by Windows own reporting, it rarely clocks over 2 GHz. And under load, like when I was downloading a game on Steam, it was staying closer to 1 GHz. And those numbers definitely affect benchmarks. On a cold boot, Geekbench got up to 500 for single core and 1500 for multi-core. That soundly beats the Pi 4 and most Intel Atom PCs. But those numbers fall a bit after 10 minutes of moderate load. CPU clocks go down and the benchmark numbers would get down to as low as 383 and 1187. I couldn't get any apps like Hardware Info or NZXT Cam to measure temps or clocks per core, but I could see the cores weren't maxing out once things got too toasty. So I pulled off the bottom cover, stuck a heatsink on, and ran it with a fan, and that way I was able to get maximum performance all day long. Just the heatsink and open air wasn't enough to prevent the throttling, I had to use the fan too. Looking at the bottom here during benchmarking, you can see the hot spot where that thermal pad is, but it's not really pulling heat off the SOC fast enough to prevent thermal throttling. I also tried sticking little feet on the bottom to raise it up, and the thermals are a tiny bit better, but it's definitely not built for sustained performance. Now, the mobile GPU performance, especially for video decoding, is pretty good. I was able to play back YouTube videos at 1080p and 1440p without any problems, though 4K playback falls apart if you go up to 60 frames per second. General use was pretty sluggish, but for ARM native apps like Firefox and Edge, it wasn't too bad. For any Intel-only apps, though, it was hit or miss and overall a frustrating experience. I mean, you'd hope that with an exclusive partnership, Qualcomm and Microsoft could have built some x86 translation right into the silicon like Apple did, making it way faster, but no. So what about Linux? After all, the Raspberry Pi can run Linux natively and unofficially runs Windows 11 almost as well as the Dot .1. Well, Linux support is complicated. There are some efforts in the community to boot Linux on Qualcomm chips to get Linux builds running on popular ARM-based Windows laptops. But the problem is most of these things require an image or a build process specific to each manufacturer's hardware. And nobody's done the bring up work for a dot one yet, so right now the only way to get Linux on here would be to spend a lot of time making a custom Linux build. I'm no stranger to that, but I'd rather wait for the community to take it on since there already are a few patches that bring some level of support in the kernel. And Qualcomm does seem to have some involvement in getting support for their chips added to Linux, but there's no quick way to build Linux for a specific ARM PC like this one. So where does this thing stand? I mean, it could be nice if you need to run Windows for a kiosk or a little edge PC, and if you have a lot of patience, it could make a passable light desktop PC. 
But Microsoft can't end that exclusivity deal with Qualcomm soon enough. Making Windows run on other ARM platforms, heck, even virtualized on M1 or M2, could motivate developers to build cross-platform so apps work faster on all ARM processors. Because in Windows' case, the x86 translation layer is pretty bad. Porting apps for ARM should make them run acceptably even on slower ARM SoCs, since they won't have to work so hard just translating system calls. But we'll see. Apple's proven that you can have your cake and eat it too with ARM. Microsoft so far has proven that they can get Windows to run on ARM. But that's about it. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.